What the heck is going on, everybody? It's your guy, Snowbike Mike, welcoming you back to another episode of the Kind of Funny X-Cast, your home for all things Xbox here at Kind of Funny. Of course, it's a big week, a whole lot to talk about, and we are happy to have both of our co-hosts back this week. So big shout out to Gary Witta. Gary Witta, how are you doing today? It's nice to have you. I'm good. I was just thinking how great it is that uh, they didn't pull the plug on us because otherwise we wouldn't be able to cover all of this this amazing news that's dropping this week. I'm glad I'm glad that the powers that be at Kind of Funny are keeping this thing going because it, it seems like it's just starting to get really interesting in Xbox land. It is only heating up over here in the Xbox world. That is right, Gary Witter. We got a lot to talk about and who better to talk about it with than our favorites, Alana Pierce. Alana, welcome back. We hope Gary, you're doing so I'm, well. I'm the favorite. I was just going to say, what? hold on, favorite. what's going on here? You're not supposed to have favorites, Mike. You're supposed to treat Thank us all you. equally. We're all your favorite. <laughs> I'm sorry I wasn't here last week. I had a migraine. I tried. It doesn't whack out very well. But I have chosen a great week to come back. Per absolutely. A week to come back. What a, what a week. If only we had something to talk about this week, Mike. I know. What are we going to do? I was going to make the joke of, oh, we got to talk about Tokyo Game Show. We got to talk about Ubisoft Ford. But no, we have way more to talk about. So I'm going to jump right into housekeeping news. And we're going to get right into the conversation. So, of course, this is the Kind of Funny X cast each and every Saturday at 6 a.m. West Coast, Best Coast time on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and podcast services. We will post our latest episode. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video and share it with all of your friends. And of course, over on podcast services, if you can do me a favor, rate that podcast, help us climb those charts and leave a nice comment. And finally, our kind of funny Xbox weekends continue. That's right. It's weekend number three of the kind of funny Xbox weekends. You have the kind of funny X cast episode nine hosting today. If you're listening and or watching, and then you will have another episode, another mission of our CEO, Greg Miller's first ever playthrough of Halo combat evolved. So make sure to tune in and enjoy your Xbox weekends. No more housekeeping. Let's jump right into it. Alana, Gary. Wow, oh, wow, what a week it's been. And it all started with a nice tweet and a leak late on Monday night. Xbox responded well, took that one on the chin, but we'll talk about all that. Let's just jump right into it. We now know that the Xbox Series S is now a real thing, and we know all the information about it. I got prices, I got dates, I got pre-orders for both the Xbox Series S and Series X. We know a lot about the X, so let's just look at the S really quick. Of course, Microsoft is touting an all-digital box, faster load times, with a 512-gigabyte SSD targeting 1440 at 60 frames per second, up to 120, 4K upscaling for games, ray tracing, variable rate shading, variable refresh rate, takes advantage of the Xbox Velocity architecture, quick resume features, and backwards compatibility all in the smallest box ever at two ninety nine. I'm going to kick it right over to Alana because she's back this week. Alana, how jazzed are you about the Xbox Series S? I think this is like that. I have like a few thoughts. Uh, insane that we got a console announcement at twelve thirteen a.m. <laughs> was when they tweeted <laughs> it out. It's just so so wild watching how all of this stuff is rolling out in this particular period of time. It's just so nuts. So I, I think that um, 299 is awesome. Uh, and I, I feel like I, when I first made my reaction video to this on my own channel, I like didn't mention that um, because it's like, it's a given, but 299 is such a good price for next gen gaming um, and the all access program where people can pay, I think it's 25 a month for the Series S. Yep, that is So correct. good for people who uh, have lesser incomes like this. Gaming is a luxury hobby. It is an expensive hobby. Um, this is incredibly good value for people who are less fortunate, people who can't spend as much money on video games. And that that's a huge thing that I do think uh, it's worth giving them credit for. Um, on the other hand, there are a couple of things about this that I find like strange. Like, A, don't love the way it looks, but I think I've said on the show before that I never like hardware when I first see it, and then I get over it and I'm totally used to it in a little while. It happens every generation. Uh, so that doesn't really mean anything. Um, but I also find it strange that the Series S is all digital, but also has the lesser hard drive versus the X, meaning that how many games are we going to have on there and how often am I going to have to delete them? 
seems like a strange choice to do that. Um, but it is also definitely seemingly very different to what we're thinking PlayStation's approach is of having the discless console be the one that also has less power rather than just the same console without a disk drive. Um, the Series S is just significantly more different to the X than I expected. Um, and I feel like it probably is going to sell the better of the of the two. Uh, the Series S is going to sell better than the X. It's, it's cheaper. Um, but it is also, you know, uh, underpowered insofar as it seems like it should really only uh, influence resolution. Um, so, yeah, it's just a lot of interesting choices. Uh, but ultimately, I think the value is, is fantastic. It's almost a no-brainer. And I love a small console because... This is a, a very particular setup, but I'm often moving stuff around so I can plug one thing to my Elgato or take something to work. You know, like I feel like I'm like moving Xboxes around all the time and they're so easy to fit in a backpack. And I'm like, you're telling me it's even smaller? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Let's do it. So, yeah, impressed by the value. Think some of the choices are a little bit odd. All right. Gary Witt, I'll kick it over to you. We're talking value. We're talking size. We're talking specs. What do you think about the Xbox Series S? So many thoughts, Mike. So many thoughts uh, since they since they dropped this thing earlier this week. There's been, it's been a lot. I mean, it's almost been a lot to take in, right? So much news coming at us so fast uh, that you know we've really there's, there's been a lot to process and think about, and I'm still processing it. Uh, but I did talk about this earlier in the week with um, Tim on uh, Kind of Funny uh, Games Daily, and you know I, I I I'm thinking about this in terms of like the big strategic picture. If you look at now how this kind of complements and fills out Microsoft's like overall offering this holiday and going forward. I think it's really, really compelling. The Series X is there for the high end, you know, cutting edge, high disposable uh, income gamer that's got to have like the extreme, you know, you know, top of the line experience. The Series X, we already know is going to check that box. But what about everyone else? What about those who don't, you know, consider 500 bucks really that doable. Let's not forget the economy's in the tank. A lot of people are broke right now. We're not, we don't necessarily have a lot of kind of luxury income uh, to spend. At least most people don't. Um, and so I think with this one very compelling move, a box which is more than powerful enough for most people, and that's the key, right? And most people don't necessarily care about 4K. They either don't have 4K TVs um, or can't really tell much of a difference between 1080p and 4K, or just don't care that much about that difference. Um, this this box is gonna is gonna do the job more than well enough. And the key is, and this is why you know it is a slightly odd choice for an all digital box. You might want to see a lot of storage space. 512 is not that much. You're going to be juggling, right? You're going to be deleting things to get new games on there, unless you want to go with the external uh, storage uh, solution, which is going to cost more money. But out of the gate. The key is that Microsoft engineered this box and made all the decisions about getting to that really eye-catching price point. That's been the, the big takeaway, right? $299 for that much power? That's really, really impressive. And you could argue about semantics, like is this a true next-gen experience? Do you need to be 4K to be considered truly uh, next-gen? Like that's an argument that, that we can have. But, the, but, the, but at the end of the day, this is, I, I, I think this is a next-gen box. This is part of Xbox's next-gen uh, offering. It's obviously way more powerful than the One X. Anything else that's out there right right now, um, it's it, it's it's gonna it's gonna scratch that next gen itch for the majority of people. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Series S sold a lot more than the Series X, just because it's cheaper and aimed at you know a broader uh, audience, not necessarily that hardcore audience that the Series X um, is aimed at. So I think Microsoft has laid down a very very big marker here. It's like your move, Sony, right? Like, what what does Sony do now? They have effectively have, I think, in the broad in the, in the, in the broad strategic picture, lost the price war. They can't they can't possibly compete on value now. Uh, maybe maybe the one thing that they could do is bring that digital version of the PlayStation Five in at three ninety nine, undercut the Series X, and say, hey, listen, if you want the true next gen experience, four K and all the bells and whistles, the uncompromised next gen experience, we've still got the cheapest box out there at three ninety nine. My guess is they can't afford to do that unless they're willing to take a big loss. I think that the, I still think that the the, the PlayStation Five is going to come in at five or five fifty. The digital version uh, is going to come in at four fifty or five. I don't think it's going to get much cheaper than that. They're certainly not going to be able to get close to what the Series S 
is priced at. So I think Microsoft has has made a very very aggressive move here to kind of vacuum up a lot of the a lot of gamers out there who again don't have the most money to spend and don't care about having the most elite cutting edge experience. I think strategically this is really really interesting. This is totally kind of recalibrated and reset the next gen conversation now that Microsoft's full offering between these two boxes, the lower powered, lower priced one and the higher powered, higher priced one has come into in, into sharp focus. We now know the prices, we know the dates, we know the specs. Yeah, it's really interesting and really compelling. And your move, Sony, basically. Yep, I totally agree with that, Gary, and you, Alana, as well. There's a lot to talk about here. And I think Microsoft really made an incredible impact this week, right? Alana alluded to it earlier. We had the leak release at 9 a.m. or 9 p.m. West Coast time. The official Xbox word came out at about 12.15 a.m. on a Tuesday morning. So truly incredible to see them thinking on their feet, adjusting, and somehow making everybody so happy and impressed with 246 characters on Twitter, which was really an incredible feat to see. I'm actually really pumped up about the price. And when I look around, Gary, like you brought up, if the difference is really just resolution, right? And there's some small differences there, but the biggest point that people are going to point to is, hey, this is just going to do 1440p. And you look around your house and you go, how many 4K TVs do I really have? And how many 4K TVs does really the general mass public have? I think this is a great point to get across and say, hey, for $299, you're going to get all of the features of the next generation. It's just not going to run natively at 4K. That's a really cool selling point for me. But let's talk about the prices really quick. Now that we have the price, date, and pre-order for both of the consoles. So now the Series S will run at $299 and the Series X will come in at $499. Release date of November 10th, 2020. And pre-orders start in exactly 10 days from when you're listening, September 22nd, 2020. I'm really impressed with both of these price points right here. I would call them very competitive price points. We talked about that 600 price point a couple of weeks ago. And to be honest with you, I was coming in expecting maybe the Series X to be at 599, right? I know that a lot of people will gawk at that, but as we continue to grow in power, we elevate these consoles, we have to also expect that the market will dictate a little bit higher price. But for Xbox to come in with two very competitive price models, I'm impressed by that and I'm pretty happy about it. Alana, what do you think about these two prices? Um, yeah, I feel like I didn't expect the Series S to be as cheap as it was. And I feel like the X was like right on the mark for what I would have hoped. Um, and I think maybe what I expected, I'm not surprised by the price of the X, um, but I'm happy with it. Like, I don't have anything else to say other than you did great. Good job. Uh, and especially considering, again, we, you know, obviously you mentioned it a million times before. I know Gary's on the same train with Game Pass. Um, both of those consoles, you know, it just so much more value. And now they're adding uh, EA Play to that subscription. It's just, it's just a lot of value. Uh, so definitely impressed, happy. Yeah, I think they did a good job. Yeah, I don't think anyone's terribly surprised by the 499, as Alana says. That was, I think, probably if you go back and look at all the guesses that were out there in the air supply prior to the official announcement, 499, I think, is kind of where most educated guesses were at, looking at the specs and you know, we we generally know like there's a very narrow band where you can price these consoles. It's fifty dollars here or there. Four ninety nine is pretty much, I think, what most people expected. The real surprise is the two ninety nine, a box that is for the Series S, a box that is more capable, more powerful, smaller, and has better features than the One X that's currently out there, and a hundred bucks cheaper than they're currently selling the One X for, is really really impressive. And again, I think I I, I think they're gonna they're gonna hit a very broad market with this. I was mentioning to you before the show, I think streamers, like Twitch streamers and people that play games online are going to be really interested in the Series S. You can't stream in 4K on Twitch or any other platform right now anyway, so why not go with the Series S and play I've got, I've got, you know, the, 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 the mix of stream on is a 1440p native monitor. Anyway, sorry, Eleanor, what did you say? I didn't hear. I said RIP mixer. You put it on <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, exactly. Right. So maybe that's why they killed it. Hey, Lena, there's no 4K streaming platforms left. Might as well get, might as well get, might as well get a Series S. Um, so I think for a lot of people, again, this is going to be more than good enough. Uh, not everyone is looking for those bleeding edge specs. And again, for those that are, that offering is there for you as well. You just got to spend a little bit more money. Um, I wanted to touch on the aesthetic a little bit. I, um, I'm i not sure how I feel about the look of the... Uh, I generally don't mind white consoles. I think they can be uh, eye-catching. A lot of people have had fun with the white... Uh, sorry, with the black 
thing on the top, which I'm guessing is a vent, right? What else would that be? It's an, it's got to be a direct, yeah, thermal uh -huh. vent, right? Because yeah. Yeah. we've all learned from the last generation, particularly those poor bastards among us like me, who have an early uh, model uh, PS4 Pro, just how important good cooling is. Unless you want your console to sound like a leaf blower when you're trying to play a yeah. video game, you got to have good cooling. Um, Phil Spencer has spoken about the importance of like good thermals and good airflow in in this next generation of design. We clearly see that with the One X. Uh, sorry, with the Series X. Um, that's another thing, by the way. This is so confusing. Did you see how the wrong console was trending over the over, over the last few days? Like the One X was trending because people got confused as to what the difference was between the One X and the Series X. I, I made still a think YouTube that video where I said the Xbox One X and the Xbox One X. Like twice, <laughs> thinking that I was also I, saying S, and I was like, you know what I mean, but like, I, it, it's a mess. I still think that that that's the the weakest part of this. Like the, the the naming convention is a mess. Sony have this down. PS2, PS3, PS4, PS5. I get it. And there's a pro in there as well. Like, and that's like the PS4.5. Like that's as confusing as it gets. One S, One X, Series S, Series X. Come on, it's it's confusing for a lot of people. It's confusing. I, 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 I keep tripping over it, and I think about this stuff all day. I think they're trying to go with the mobile approach where you've got your iPhone SE and your iPhone X and your iPhone whatever. Uh, and it obviously worked really well for the DS line of the I and the Lite and the XL and the 3DS XL <laughs> and the new 3DS XL. Um, Don't forget the 2DS XL. The oh, 2DS XL and the 2DS. <laughs> and that, that family of consoles is the best-selling family of consoles ever. Um, so it's an interesting thing that I was just thinking about that this week because I kept being like, these names are ridiculous. Um, if I'm tripping up and if Gary's tripping up, then everyone's tripping up. Uh, yeah, and, like grandma but, but, who's but, looking to buy little Johnny a console this Christmas, they're going to be lost in the wilderness trying to figure I this out. I kind of don't think they are anymore. Uh, maybe grandma, but I don't think your parents are. Again, on that logic that the, DD, the DS family has sold so incredibly well and boomers understand iPhones, you know? So I feel like the tactic of naming them this way uh, and removing the numbers is potentially... This, I think there's some kind of strategy in there uh, that is probably making people like this is this is very uh, this is very much a guess where it just comes from a brief stint studying marketing, where I think probably what this means is that they are going to iterate more. So you're going to have a new Xbox in two years and another one in two years after that. If you get rid of the numbers, it means that we aren't getting to a 10 and it just seems like it's totally blown out of proportion of how many there actually are. So if it's a series line that's for the next two years and then they iterate again in another two years and then in another two years, changing up the naming convention basically on the fly, I think gives people an indication that something is less permanent and they'll be more likely to upgrade. Maybe so. Uh, I just, I, I know for, a, I don't know if it'll be a trivial, trivial amount or more, but there's going to be a kid, multiple kids this Christmas Hey, we got you that Xbox Series X you wanted. He's going to unwrap it and it's going to be a One X because somebody fucked up. Like that's going to, I guarantee you that's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And that's not going to, no one's accidentally going to buy a PS4 instead of a PS5, but somebody will buy an Xbox One X instead of a Series X. It's going to well, happen. What if they just discontinue the One X in favor of the S? Wouldn't that make sense? So they are just, but that is exactly what they're doing. But this, I think there's still going to be stock on shelves, at least over the holidays. There's going to be some confusion It'll well, eventually well, go mean, away as they discontinue yeah, these earlier plan, models. Oh, I, during, you can't. I was going to say, you plan to just have them all gone by then, but you can't control what retail no, is. Dur have. During this transitional period, there's going to be a bit of confusion. But that's that's an ephemeral thing. Um, it'll it'll come and go. Um, yeah, I mean, just overall, I think this is a... I, I think Microsoft have really, really, really laid down a very uh, powerful argument for price. Unless PlayStation has got, a, you know, a PS5 Junior up its sleeve, which it doesn't. We know that it's too late now. Um, they're not going to be able to compete on price. They, they, they're gonna, there's going to be two very different arguments uh, going into this holiday season in terms of like the console wars of it all. Like there's not much difference between the One X and the PlayStation 5 in terms of specs. There won't be much difference in terms of price. But now here comes this Series S, which is like a real wild card, um, which is going to be able to get to, it's going to reach all those parts of the gaming market that there's gonna be a lot of people for whom the One X, sorry, the Series, I, see, I keep doing it, Microsoft, the Series mm -hmm. S, and the PlayStation 5, as much as they might want it, it's just going to be out of their reach. But the Series S isn't going to be out of their reach. And if, and if Microsoft can just make that argument, which I think they are successfully making based on the specs, hey, this is, you know, again, this is, this is still true next-gen gaming. There's only, it's only a couple of boxes that it's not going to check, and you probably don't care about them boxes anyway. That's a good argument.
Alana, what do you think about, let, let's focus on the look for a minute because then I want to go back to value. So Alana, for you, you talked about it being small, thrown and in your backpack, being able to reorganize your desk. What do you think of the all white look of the Series S with that black, you know, we'll call that an exhaust area. We saw that on the Xbox One S before. It was just all white on the top. What do you think of the S and of course the X as well with that big tower? I think they both look really dumb. But again, <laughs> like, like my mind always changes on that. Um, I definitely like the simple design. Those are little rectangles. They are small boxes. It's not, you know, a million different bits and things that are sticking out and things that aren't sticking out. Like I even find the design of the um, One X to be a little bit strange because it's a small part and then the broader part at the top, you know? Uh, so I certainly like that it's just a, a neat little box. Um, I, I hate the all the holes. I think, what's it called? Trypophobia? Uh, people oh, who just God, really don't, don't like me. looking at yeah. holes. Uh, it's basically a texture issue, which I do have, but these aren't doing that to me at all. So, um, but, but that could be potentially an issue for some people who like, basically it's like the appearance of something sort of makes you feel sick or like it's like you get chills. Um, and it's specifically with, yeah, holes in, in like, I think foam can do it to people. Uh, it could happen with these consoles. Could be a could be a setback. But for the most part, you know, I I think I just need to get used to seeing them in person, and then I'll completely forget that I even had any objection with how they look. I just think all new hardware always looks a bit silly. But they'll both fit in my display cabinets. I have seen people tweeting saying the reason they aren't getting an X is because it won't fit. Um, so that's a massive bummer for people who have really slim setups. I <laughs> yeah. Think. I mean, look, the, fit fine for me. I'm all right. <laughs> the, the, the Series X is a chunky boy, isn't it? Now, now that those dummy, because you know Microsoft have been shipping out these dummy cases so that people can really see the, like you know, the real. You you never get a sense for what these things look like until you actually see one in the flesh, right? It's like, yeah. oh, that's way smaller than I thought, or way bigger, or whatever. Until you actually have it in front of you, um, and and some people have been getting that because Microsoft have been shipping out these dummy cases so that people can get a sense of like the real size, you know, scale footprint of the thing. Um, yeah, and the the and and I, and I think it's it's been a tale of two of, of two sizes, right? It's like wow, the One X is it, yeah, it's big, like it's bigger than you think, and the Series S, wow, it's smaller than you think. Uh, there's a massive difference difference between the two sizes. It seems like when you when you clock them um, in real life, I don't mind the white aesthetic. I think you know, oftentimes that tends to kind of see if you've got like a black you know entertainment center or whatever, it can kind of stick out a little bit. Um, I actually really like the white controller. I can see myself getting a, the the ghost white controller as like a second controller. Um, and I probably will get a Series S as a streaming box, you know, for down here in my streaming setup. Um, anyway, I, d I don't love the, the 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 black circle on the top has has raised a lot of eyebrows. You know, people have called it the hot plate. It does kind of look like the hot plate that you have in your bachelor yeah. studio apartment or whatever, where you're cooking or it looks like a can giant of speaker. Campbell's soup or yeah. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, some people thought it was a speaker. Is that what? Did they put a built-in yeah. speaker in this thing? Like yeah. that? Yeah. There's laundry been a lot of funny machine. Photos, it's got. I, it's, I, I made a fall guy out of it. I made a little. Guy yeah, it's got, yeah. I mean, it's got to be. It's got to be a vent, right? Because sure. and, and it's a lot of cooling because whole, like, like whole the whole side of it is a vent as well. So I think they're just going all out on <laughs> venting and cooling, and that makes a lot of sense. I just don't know why they didn't just make the whole thing white. Why did they need to pick that circle out in black on the top? It's just it's not visually Point. aesthetically pleasing to me. But overall, I prefer the. I prefer you know again two very very different um, kind of external architectures for the for the competing consoles uh this year xbox really really you know leaned hard into the box part of their name this year this kind of brutalist yeah it's just all right angles like it's just a box like it, it cannot design wise literally be any simpler than this like it's the most geometrically simple thing they could ship whereas playstation you know, as you know has gone with this very kind of curvy fluid um you know rippling kind of design which i think is like massively over designed but you know i'll, I'll again get a better sense of it uh, when I see it, but I don't know if I need all these fins and spoilers and kind of this very kind of over the top uh, kind of contour design that Sony went with this generation. They're going to look very different uh, sitting next to one another. I um, think that that was probably their attempt at ventilation. Right. Yeah. And Phil spoke to that. Yeah. Oh, did he? So yeah. I, I when, that, like when virtually when everything. Animal everything is I asked him what he thought of the cool. PlayStation Five design, and he said he thought it was a it was it was a function of Sony's uh desire you know to go for the best cooling possible because as these yeah. clock speeds get higher and higher like these consoles i mean not compared to a p like you know the new generation nvidia cards on pc blow these things away already but in, but in console terms these things are very very high powered they're running at very high clocks they're going to need a lot of cooling uh less so xbox 
But big, big time Sony this year. Again, anyone who's played Last of Us Part 2 or any high-end game on a PlayStation 4 Pro this year just knows how important cooling is because these fans are really, really working overtime what? to the point where you literally need to dial up the volume in the game. Are you not having this problem? No, but it's only with my Death Stranding Pro specifically, which like huh. I really... So my, my current console setup on my TV cabinet, I have the um, Gears 5X and the Death Stranding Pro, which look beautiful next to each other because mm. they're both white with a bunch of like sort of black or gray accents on them. They're, they look lovely, but I weirdly didn't have the fan problem with my um, Pro playing The Last of Us, but if I try to play it on my regular PS4, because I just have like a console on each TV that I just swap between, uh, yeah, it absolutely sounds like my apartment's yeah. like- So the, so a lot of the reason why you that. haven't had that problem is because that Death Stranding Pro that you've got is like the most recent hardware rev. Where the, where, the, where the cooling and the fan got... I mean, it has to be because it came with Death Stranding, so it has to be a recent one. I I've got an earlier the- PS4. There's like three different revs where they got better with the with the thermal stuff each time. Yeah. I've got an earlier one. I went and like opened up the case and like checked the number and you can go online and figure out how to figure out which rev you have. I have rev one. Yeah, and that's the one that sounds <laughs> like a fucking rocket launch. Mm. I've Every not had time any you- fan issues with any of my Xboxes, though. Um no, because X- like, Xbox does it better. My One X never makes noise like a no, like a PlayStation Four Pro does. I think Microsoft have, have had better cooling and better thermals this generation. It'll be interesting to see. Again, they've got two very very different solutions. As you can see, they both went with like a lot of ventilation, and and they've they've come up with different hardware aesthetic, you know, case designs that have allowed. I guarantee you both of these were designed big time for like maximum you know thermal efficiency, maximum cooling. Uh, that's why. Of which they should, they're terrified of another red ring of death. They don't oh, nobody yeah. wants to ever yeah. live through that again, and I get it. But, man, I'm just looking at photos. Uh, so IGN's Ryan McCaffrey was one of the people, I guess IGN, got sent the the boxes. So he's got, there are 56 photos here on IGN. If you Google Series X IGN, it's one of the first things that comes up. So I'm just looking at comparison photos right now. The Series X is huge. Hey. Huge, Alana. It is oh chunky, God. as Gary said. It is tall. It is beefy. It's big. It's right. It's very big. Yeah, I'm. I'm. It is not going to work in my streaming setup. It's too big. Um, whereas the Series S will work, which is kind of what to Gary was saying. And I don't know, like, how much of the people listening care about that kind of thing. But having that smaller console, if I need to stream something from uh, Xbox, is going to be awesome for this setup. But the uh, yeah, there it is, Barrett. Uh, yeah. The X is like. Damn, man! I like. I knew it was big, but I yeah. feel like I mean that boy. You know, you know, you know what? It, I'm looking at it as well right now, Alan. You know what it reminds me of? It all remind. I actually don't think it's that difference. Like, like a like a like a micro form like ATX PC case. I think it, like it's actually as big as like a like a small gaming PC. Probably, yeah. Well, Which, let's let's hold on that photo, Bear. Why don't you go back for me really quick? So, of course, you can see as Alana and Gary said, we have two massively distinct and different boxes here. The Xbox Series S, which will be the smallest, most compact box you've ever seen, and the big power horse, which is the X. But if you notice there on the back, you're going to see a slot right there for the one terabyte expansion cards that will be able to be used Mm -hmm. with the consoles. So now this is going to be a topic that we need to discuss with value. So for the both of you, of course, we brought up the great price of $299 for the Xbox series s but the catch is it will only have 512 gigabytes of memory on the ssd so now you will have to look towards this one terabyte expansion card to really use all of the next generation powers that that ssd is going to provide rumors right now is this this uh card will be 250 people are hoping it will be a hundred dollars alana and gary we'll go over to gary first with the uh the value proposition if this thing is two hundred and fifty dollars, Gary, I, I might as well be buying the Series X. What do you think about this for a memory expansion card? So, I mean, like I said, the, the whole strategy with the Series X in terms of the hardware design and the engineering was get just get it in at this price. Like, I think I think they said this is the price we need it to be. Make this work. Like, you know, we, we, there's obviously like you know we need to be able to say this is cool from a hardware perspective. Like, they don't want to just rebrand the One X and have it be a last gen box. Like, it needed to be a next gen box. And again, I think it is, you know, 1440p, the Velocity um, uh, SSD, uh, up to 120 frames a second, 4K upscaling, all of the things that it's offering. You know, it's it, like I said, it's going to scratch that itch for the majority of gamers looking for a, for a next-gen experience 
who don't necessarily care about like the highest frame rates at 4K. It's going to it's going to get you 90% of the way there in terms of, you know, a full fat next gen experience. Again, that's going to be good enough for most people. In order to get in at a 299, they clearly had to make some compromises. I think lo losing the disk drive, no no one's crying a river over that, right? Like no no one's going, "Oh, but where's the disk drive?" because we're already basically halfway there. Um, in terms of the disk drive, it's like a $30. If you, if you think about the, the cost of the drive, plus like the Blu-ray licensing fee that you have to pay on every box, they're saving like 40, 50 bucks there, just throwing that thing out. And no, again, no one, no one really cares that it's not there. The other way that they clearly chose to make a compromise was that 512 hard drive. I think a lot of us would much prefer uh, to have seen the one terabyte drive. I just don't, I just don't think they could have made the numbers add up at 299. Now, while it's nice to be able to upgrade it later, I don't love that they seem to be steering us towards this proprietary solution uh, mm -hmm. and that we're not going to be able to continue to just plug in whatever, you know, USB 3 hard drive we might have lying around the place that like we could do with the current generation. That seems a bit consumer unfriendly. No one really loves to be like forced down these kind of proprietary storage paths where you've got to buy a separate thing and you're beholden to whatever that price is. You're not going to be able to shop around looking for a deal on a hard drive uh, like a good Seagate or a Western Digital. You know, there's usually all these third-party hard drives out there that are aimed at, you know, kind of the console, you know, expanded storage market. I don't love the fact that that's not going to be an option that we're going to have going to the next generation. So hopefully they will be able to make these expansions cheap because you're going to want it. Like one, once you get that 299 console, and it's all digital. Like I have, I have a one terabyte um, uh, Xbox One X right now, and I'm constantly juggling, looking to install a mm -hmm. new game. Uh, but in order to fit it, I've got to look at my current library and think, okay, what am I least likely to play in the next few months? I'm happy uninstalling it. Now. Even at one terabyte, you know, if we have a big game library digitally, we're always making those compromises. I think you're going to really feel the pinch at five twelve in terms of how many games you can have installed at any one time. So I think people are going to um, buy in at two ninety nine have a great experience. But if, if they're going to feel the pinch anywhere, it's on that storage. And then, yeah, Microsoft's going to upsell you on a, on a, on a storage experience, you know, a, a storage expansion for hopefully uh, a reasonable price. I just, I really wish they, they had, they had, they had uh, given us the option to plug in any old hard drive. They know I'd have no problem at all, but the fact that you're going to go with this, it, it looks like a cool um, thing that they're selling, the Seagate thing that really just looks like a little thumb drive that you stick into the back um, again, it's, it would have to be a solid state driver. The whole point is solid state, solid state. We want to get away from spinning platters and, and slower storage. Like the whole thing is even on series S is really, really fast, you know, loading time. So maybe they felt that they needed to go down this proprietary path in order to preserve, you know, the user, the user experience. So like everything's going to load up super, super fast. They don't want that compromised by you plugging in any old third party drive. Mm -hmm. They want to go with the ones that, that, that they have the approved specs. It's just, it's, it's, it's going to be. And I, and I think that in time, third-party solutions will come to market. But in the short term, I feel like if there's a compromise that uh, Series S owners are going to feel, it's going to be when they start loading up their game, uh, their hard drive with games, and and be surprised at how quickly it fills up. They can only have like five by the looks yeah. of things. Like it, yeah, yeah I mean, it'll it'll be brutal. Right? Like, like if what, you want what, GTA, game, like a hundred gig install these days, roughly. I yeah, mean, think of my Call of, Call of Duty, Duty like Call of yeah. Duty Modern Warfare with battle, battles or war zone is a hundred. Halo 5 is 100. Halo Master Chief is 100. That takes up, you know, three-fifths yeah. of my box already yeah. there. And, and don't forget, you're not play. getting 512. You're going to get about 450 of usable yeah. space once the UI yeah. and the uh, everything, you know, and the system software uh, is taken. Because that all, that all gets taken out as well. You know, you'll see this all the time with, like, when you buy an iPhone. Oh, 128 gigs. But it'll say, like, you know, only, like, 90 of that is usable or whatever because <laughs> they have to keep a bunch of it in reserve just for the firmware. So it's going to be probably closer to like 450 or something like that. I don't know if Microsoft has spoken mm -hmm. to that. But Alana's right. You're going to be, you, you, you're not going to have more than like four or five games. And, and, and smaller indie games, sure. But like big Call of Duty, Assassin's Creed type games, four or five if you're lucky before you have to start either juggling or looking at expanded storage. Yeah, Alana, I think are you that, worried about this? Yes, definitely. That was the, like, I think I said my first impression of the Series S was like having less storage space on that box uh, seems like a major issue when it's the one without the the disk drive. It is an all digital console. Um, it, yeah, it's it's a surprising thing to see. Um, I juggle constantly on, I don't know how many Xboxes I have set up permanently. I think it's three in here. But I'm like always, like almost daily, I feel like deleting something to install something else and like managing updates and yeah, I'm always going through it. And then whenever I have to download something on PC, I'm like, I still have Excellent, eight terabytes. Great, no worries. Like it's it's so nice to not have to worry about it. 
So that's for sure a thing. Um, my immediate reaction to seeing these expansion cards, though, which I know is really silly and doesn't help any consumers, but I was just like, oh man, the nostalgia. Like yes. I remember the yeah. N64 having an expansion pack uh, that yeah. unlocked like more that you could do in Perfect Dark. Um, and then obviously PlayStation 1 having little memory packs. Like that stuff just like, maybe like, man, they were onto something back then and we're going back to it. And I find it oddly really cute. <laughs> Um, but I, I'm strongly in agreement that they could make huge errors here with them being way too expensive. That would, it's it's not just that it would like be annoying for us to have to purchase several of these things at two hundred and fifty dollars, uh, which I probably wouldn't do. I probably would be like, no, let me just delete stuff all the time, which is going to be annoying. But I think that's probably what I would do. I was spending two hundred and fifty dollars on extra storage. Uh, that's it's a lot of money. But it's also like there are people who just simply won't be able to afford that. That is just too much for those people, uh, no doubt. And especially with Game Pass, I feel like it's so appealing to want to play so many games because you have them in your library essentially for free and then being like, well, I'm going to have to make decisions based on not being able to store half of these games almost like decreases the value of that thing. So yeah, it's definitely a little conundrum. Uh, I, I think $100 would be ideal, but ultimately don't know if that's possible. The The good news is storage is getting cheaper what it feels like by the minute you know like i remember when i first bought uh a usb and it was like maybe one gig for maybe 15 dollars and now you probably wouldn't even get a one gigabyte usb and if you did it'd be like two dollars and, and memory cards are the same they're, they're getting either smaller or cheaper um and I, and I imagine throughout this cycle uh again i i suspect that Xbox is going to be releasing new consoles in two, three years, and that we are going to change the way that the cycle operates. But the storage will get cheaper as time goes on. So one terabyte will uh, end up costing less. Uh, that expansion card should go down in price in theory. Um, it is That could also be counted out by the games getting more expensive, though. So. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at a bunch of one terabyte SSDs on Amazon right now, and they're all around that $100 price point. Yeah. Uh, so I think that probably is. I think I, my guess it's is they'll bring it in at around 99 And again, all, all Microsoft cared about was get, was hitting that really compelling $299 price. Yes, there's a, it is, is yeah. going to be the first compromise that gamers are going to feel. Oh, wow, my, my, my hard drive's already filled up. Wow. Because like, it is going to go quickly. But it will be enough to get you started. And maybe six months from now or a year from now, you've got a bit more money in your pocket to go out and, 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 and upgrade the storage. I think Microsoft's probably assuming Rome is certainly going to do that in time. The point is you don't have to pay for it all at once. It's an easy and yeah. hopefully relatively cheap expansion you can add to your system down the road. You're right, Gary. I would prefer that it costs me $299 for the Series S with limited storage than having to pay $399 with an extra terabyte. Like I think having the option to do that and you choosing when you want to opt in to get the extra terabyte is preferable for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah, I just, hopefully they do keep it around that that $100. And sorry, I think I misspoke earlier. I said games are getting more expensive. I meant bigger. Uh, <laughs> so the games are only getting larger in size. So we'll see how much that changes too. But uh, yeah, I, I think it, it's better to give players choice. And it's also, you could swap out expansion cards in theory yeah you like, and, and also at 399 the difference between the two boxes it was like well why not just like you know go up like, scrape scrape the other 100 bucks together and get like the the you know the, the 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 more powerful box like i think microsoft wanted to have two really really different offerings here like 200 bucks is real money to a lot of people and again i i i think that the that the, the they are going to be able to hit a much broader spectrum there are going to be mm -hmm. plenty of people out there that as much as they want a playstation 5 they just can't. They just can't buy into it. It's just too much money. Um, and for those people, I, I I think that that that's a big target of opportunity for um, the Series S. That's Taking a question I love to ask both of you. Oh. Is okay. Do you think that actually works at this point? Like, it's so hard to think about this stuff in a broader picture when I feel like I'm so ingrained in games culture and the games community. Is if you're saying the Series S is two ninety nine and say the PS five is going to be four ninety nine at its cheapest without a disc drive. Do you think that that price difference is even enough to cut through the aggressive brand loyalty uh, that people have for either party? Like, does that price difference even actually matter when someone has been a PlayStation gamer their whole life? Because I kind of feel like it doesn't. For me, Alana, I will agree with you. I do not think it does after what I've seen for so many years with people really drawing the line in the stand. But I think it's going to come to the conversation now of, now you might be more tempted to buy into another ecosystem and not be so apprehensive of saying, I can only buy one box and that's going to be my box. Now you can say, 
well, maybe in a year or so I could buy that cheaper box and I could have both of them as I look around my house, right? And I have both of the consoles. I have all three really. And I have spent a lot of money on that. If I had a cheaper version there, it might make me want to jump in a little bit faster than day one purchases. Um, I, I, take a slight, I take a slightly different view. I think I think people like us often live in a little bit of a bubble For uh, sure. where, you know, we're hardcore gamers. We're surrounded by hardcore, like the kind of people that like are going to comment on this podcast and who, you know, type into our Twitch chats. Those are not casual gamers. Those are people that are really, really invested in gaming and they will find the money and they, and they tend to be more tribal, I think, and more and more of the platform warriors. But I, I honestly think those people are the exception rather than I think most, if you look at like the millions and millions and millions and millions of consoles that Sony and Microsoft and Nintendo sell every year, those are not all hardcore platform fanatics. They're just people looking to, to have a good time and they want to play video games and, va and, and again, money and value, particularly, particularly this year when the economy uh, is in the tank. Money's a real concern. I was just reading a um, a post mortem, an interesting piece. I think it was on Kotaku uh, last night, which was kind of like you know looking back, like a post mortem on the on the Xbox One generation. Now that it's coming to an end, it's like you know, let's reflect on like the Xbox One and like you know where it where it, you know where it's going to take its place in history. And they went back to the launch and talked about that catastrophic launch that we all remember, where they bundled that Boondoggle Connect into the box and jacked the price up unnecessarily by an extra hundred hundred dollars. And a lot of factors contributed to Xbox One's terrible, terrible launch, you know, the, the, the game sharing embarrassment that Sony capitalized on. But a big, big, big one was you had two very, very similar offerings, a PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One sitting next to each other at Target or Walmart or Best Buy or on Amazon or whatever. And at the end of the day, one was $100 cheaper than the other. And that and that's a big factor for a lot of people. Not everyone is like us who will scrape together every penny of our disposable income to get that box, the, you know, the one that is truly our heart's desire. For a lot of people, they will just buy the cheapest box. It's like there's not too much difference between these two boxes. I'm going to save the money. Like you saying, I can play Assassin's Creed and Destiny and Call of Duty on this one and that one. Well, I'll just get the one that's mm. 200 bucks cheaper. We do it's, know it, that it, statistically, people really do just play third party games more than they play first party games. Right. Yeah, like the games you just listed are the games that most people are going to play. Um, and I do think like, obviously, when you think about families buying them, when you think about the parent going into the target and the kid saying, well, I want this one or I want this one. I do think that you're probably going to get parents be like, this one is cheaper. You're getting this one. Uh, right. <laughs> that, that will happen. <laughs> I just I'm very curious about what the split of that is. No, about that's how, how much right of an there. impact it can have across the board. I don't know. Let's keep it with the value proposition. Let's look at Xbox All Access program. Of course, this is something they introduced towards the end of the last generation. They're really going to push to the forefront here for the Xbox Series S and X. A lot of brought it up, right? These monthly payments. So for the Xbox All Access program for these two consoles, 24 months with no upfront payment and 0% APR. Of course, you must be approved through a third-party credit group that they're going to use for this. Um, the Series X will be $34.99. You will save some money there, about $20 after the two years, because included with this will be 24 months of Game Pass Ultimate. So make sure to add that in to the value proposition. The Series S will be $24.99. You'll save about $60 after the two years there. They're expanding this program out to 12 countries here, Australia, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, New Zealand, Norway, Poland, South Korea, Sweden, UK and the United States. You two, I think this for me, right? I was let go from my job in March. I picked up smaller part-time hours towards the end of the summer here. And I think a lot of America and a lot of the world felt that coronavirus hit to the economy. Now Xbox really pushing forward with this all access program, 0% APR, 24 months, no upfront payments and 34.99, 24.99. I think this continues to add to the value proposition, the pro-consumer moves that Microsoft and Xbox are doing. And for me, someone who is working the nine to five, looking at that, I go for the first time ever, wow, is this maybe a better move for me, right? I remember when I bought the Xbox One seven years ago at 23 years old, that was every penny I had. Now, maybe a little bit different approach here where I can pay for it monthly, similar to what I do and many others do with their phone plans. This entices me a lot to say, man, this could help me, a person that might be in need of this. Gary, what do you think about the Xbox All Access program? I, I, I think that's another really compelling factor in, in these kind of value price wars. Even, even if you're looking at this, even if you want to go in at the high end, let's say you do care about 4K. 
and you're and you're looking at a Series X or a PlayStation Five. Let's say the PlayStation Five comes in at the same price, five hundred, which is you know I think a decent bet. There's a good chance that one of those models is going to be five hundred. Um, and you're looking at both, and you're thinking, hmm, I don't know. The 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 the, the fact that one of them is going to come with no upfront cost. And you know, don't forget, it's going to be a credit check, so you got to have decent credit, and you got to mind not, you know, having a, had a having a credit check run on you. You know, your credit always takes a little bit of a a ding whenever they even run a check. So you got to be, you know, down with that, interest free. That's all good, but they, you know, only is, in America, is, only in America. But that is going to go. That is going to, you know, but the, you know, for a lot of people that want in but but can't stomach that upfront cost, to me, it's less to do with that. Like two years of Game Pass, what you're telling me that for twenty five bucks. Or thirty-five bucks uh, today, I get to take home a next-gen console, and I effectively don't have to buy a game for two years. Come on now, is it That's is it pretty... ultimate? Did you say it's Game Pass Ultimate? Uh, let me double check that, but I believe that is correct, Alana. That is Game Pass Ultimate. That is correct. Yeah, and it, and it even throws in the EA component as well, right? Which is cool. That we're going to talk about yeah. right next is right. So, Alana, what do you think about the Xbox All Access program? Before we jump into the next big one, which is this third-party partnership. Already nailed it. Great value for a lot of people who really need it right now. Um, an awesome option. Uh, when I was first reading the Windows Central article, I was concerned about it because they put, and perhaps it was my perception of what they wrote rather than them doing it themselves. I was expecting Xbox to put a lot more emphasis on all access, which just in my brain raised this flag of if they're pushing subscriptions top to bottom this hard. Uh, I, I just get nervous about that because I, I absolutely link it to games as service. I'm like, if everything is subscription-based and even buying the hardware, if Xbox were pushing it really, 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 really hard to be part of the all-access program as well, I, I just it just makes me nervous about the constant changing of the games industry that my head goes, this means there's more games as service games. Clearly, they care about subscriptions. That's going to be... This this model goes hand in hand with microtransactions, and my brain was just like, oh, I'm nervous about it. Um, but they actually aren't pushing it really at all. So it is definitely an option that exists, but none of their you know launch tweets were explicit um, about that. It's it seems like it is more of just an option rather than the option. Uh, where I was expecting them to be like twenty five dollars a month, get it this way, don't get it the other way. Where really it is just it's more of a backup, which makes me feel a little bit more secure. But I just think yeah, I. I my immediate reaction to another subscription on top of other subscriptions, like with various different levels of subscriptions, just despite it being incredible value for people who need it, which I don't want to undersell, it is absolutely amazing for a lot of people. Um, and I, I, you know, when I was a teenager and I can only afford one of the consoles and I was choosing which of, which of the things and like which three games I could get in a year and which ones I'd ask for my birthday and Christmas, you know, and I was having to think about this stuff, I could have afforded $25 a month. I could have done that. Um, and I I think that, that that's really cool for a lot of people. But yeah, it just subscription services just raise flags for me across the board when there's too many of them. So uh, that, that was a thing. And I, I, again, do think with the All Access program lasting two years, I'm hitching my wagon to consoles are going to be even more iterated this next cycle than they already were the last cycle, obviously going from that original chunky Xbox One to the Xbox One X. Um, that is, I don't even have an original Xbox One anymore. I actually think Lucy James has my Xbox One from GameSpot. I gave it to one person Friend who gave show. it to someone else who gave it to someone else. I'm pretty <laughs> sure she has my Xbox now. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I, I just think, yeah, this, this it's specifically lasting two years means in two years, we get something new the way that Nintendo does it. That's what well, I'm predicting. All right. Well, let's talk about our final big piece of news from the week, because it was a lot, like Gary said at the top of the hour, right? There was a lot coming out of this, and it all originated from a, a leak, and Microsoft did a terrific job to take that on the chin, step right back up. But they announced an awesome third-party partnership with Game Pass. So this holiday 2020, EA Play is coming into the mix. That's right. You will get EA Play, the base subscription service from that EA Play subscription over there, included in your Game Pass subscription. So really something awesome. Of course, the normal price for EA Play is $4.99 a month. They have a Play Pro, which is $14.99, but you will just get the base model, which will give you 10-hour free trials of new EA titles, unlimited access to the playlist. I'm going to bring up some titles from that. You'll save 10% on discounts. And yes, that is going to be the big one. So games from the playlist, I currently am subscribed to EA Play, so I actually take advantage of a lot of these offerings. I love the 10-hour free trials 
I've played Madden. I've played Anthem. I've played FIFA all with my free 10 hour trial without even paying for the game, which is super awesome. If you want to try it before you buy it uh, on the flip side on the playlist right now, there are some absolute banger titles over from EA. You have Anthem, you have battlefield 1943 all the way through battlefield five burnout paradise crisis one through three dead space one through three dragon age one through three fifa nba live nhl pga tour golf fight night champion madden you have mass effect one through three and andromeda mirrors edge one and two need for speed multiple titles plants versus zombies sims four skate three star wars battlefront one and two titanfall one and two and a way out I've lost breath. There are so many titles <laughs> from EA and EA Play coming now in to Game Pass this holiday 2020. Gary, what do you think about EA and this third-party partnership here? I think aside from you including Anthem in that list of bangers, Bang. uh, I, I, would, I would say... Well, now it's going to be Anthem 2.0, Gary. Remember that. Whenever well, that's that true. Happens, if it gets upgraded to like Anthem Redemption or whatever the fuck they're going to call it. Um, yeah, but I mean, I, I, as that list, well, all, all like, yes, I, I, it's just it's it's just more free shit that they're throwing in, and that's again, it all it all adds up to what is the value proposition that you're being offered uh, this holiday and beyond. Like, and 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 between the Series S at a really cheap price, between uh, the installment plan that's very you know user friendly and includes all of this you know the two years of Game Pass plus the EA stuff on top of it which you know provides additional value in like four different ways. I, I, again, I feel like Sony has have, have got some work to do in in terms of the value they're going to offer. Right now, what Sony I think is is still going with is is very simple. Here's our very 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 powerful piece of uh, next gen hardware. Hey, we're you know hey you can kind of fuck off because we're Sony, it's PlayStation. We know who we are. We're like we we you know we're kind of the Rolls Royce of gaming. That's how we position ourselves. We are we still you know we still you know are kind of you know cruising on the fact that we are the number one brand out there. They are. There's no doubt. It's a much bigger and stronger brand than Xbox um, currently. Off the back of the PlayStation Four generation, PlayStation is still number one, um, and they know it. And so they're gonna, they're gonna, they're going to come out you know swinging. Uh, and saying, hey, we have, we have super powerful hardware. It's going to be a premium price point. But now it's like, and? Because look at what Microsoft's doing over here. They've got all the, they're, again, they're, they're offering people a lot, of, a lot of value. Game Pass is amazing. This EA thing is really cool. $299 for the Series S. Um, and uh, the subscription, you know, the installment plan, the, uh, the, the Xbox All Access. Like, what's Sony's response to that? Do they need one? Or are they, are they just happy to kind of, you know, coast on on the, the strength of their brand and uh, and everything they're going to offer just, you know, in the main channel. Because I feel like Microsoft is making all of these really interesting moves with this kind of split approach, high end, low end, um, you know, all of these different uh, strategies that are aimed at providing as much value as possible. Do, does Sony need to answer this or, are they, or, or is this going to be the beginning of them losing ground? Uh, to Xbox in the next generation, because when you look at the whole holistic picture of it all, you, you right now you got to say Xbox is is offering better value for money than so. Again, we don't know the Sony price yet, but we can we can make an educated guess. It's not going to shock many people. I still think it's going to be five five fifty. I I I think it's going to be five fifty for the for the disc and five hundred for the uh, all digital. I think the most aggressive thing that Sony could do and still make a really strong argument on value going into the holiday is anything less than five. Anything less than five hundred for the discless version. Um, if, if that news will come soon. Sony at this point, uh, I'm sure, are preparing to make their own announcement regarding you know price. But there aren't going to be any like big surprises. Like they don't have a Series S up their sleeve, right? If they did, we would know it. We we would have heard something about it by now. This is what they're going with. The you know, and, and it's a, it just feels like a much less imaginative approach than what Microsoft is doing with two very very different hardware platforms. In terms of in terms of price and uh, and engineering, um, some really really imaginative approaches to you know how you're going to buy your games, how you're going to pay for your games, how you're going to pay for your console. Sony is just like, yep, here's the next box. It's another five hundred bucks. Like, I don't know. Do they do they need a do they need a better idea than that? I don't know. Alana, what do you think about this EA partnership here? We've talked. We've always for the past couple of months now. I've talked about. Microsoft and a big third-party partnership. Well, now EA signs on with EA Play to join in on Game Pass. Are you into this idea? The jump, like, my immediate reaction was 
they took something that's already amazing value and made it even better value. God damn, they just <laughs> keep doing it. Um, for me, I have never subscribed to EA Access or EA Play because I don't want to give EA my money. Um, oh. uh, so now it feels like I get the benefit of having this service without having to directly give EA my money. But it does also mean that EA is definitely going to be getting money from this in some way, which I'm like, damn you, making me give EA money. Um, but uh, yeah, ultimately, it's like, cool, now I get this thing with something that I already pay Microsoft for. So great. Uh, happy to have it. One of the particularly cool things about uh, EA Access is a program, which I keep calling it that because that's what I think I'm used to it being called. There's, they have so many like wild tiers. And EA Play EA... was like their conference thing at first. Why? Right. It's so confusing. There is yeah, a, it's a all over access is a thing, right? Isn't that what they used they call it or used to call it? They're yes. like, they use, they, they've rebranded, rebranded a couple yes. times now. It Can't was EA access. Branding. It's it's they also like, oh my god, if you look at the release dates for EA games, it's like if you have this service, it's this day, and this one is this oh, day, this one's yes. this day, but only that, five that days ago. That's just pretty pretty the cable that they have to release every time a game comes out now in terms of here's what you get with the ultimate platinum super duper edition yeah. and you can play it a week early and you don't get this and you can upgrade to the next gen for that like it's getting really i don't even really know when ea games obnoxious. come out anymore i'm like i don't know what the release date for that is it depends i guess it's like a somewhere in a 10 window period uh but one very cool thing about it uh, especially for people who you know work in the industry or creating content in any capacity is that you do generally get games early uh which is super cool for streaming or whatever else so definitely a plus there and it, it's it's definitely no secret that ea do have a lot of really great games um threw me for a loop hearing someone say battlefield 1943 because i just when you start to say battlefield 194 i just expected you to say 42 to the extent that i looked it up because i didn't even know that battlefield 1943 <laughs> existed um, I guess it came out in 2009 because at that point in time, I was probably still playing Battlefield 1942. And now I'm like, why is Battlefield 1942 not on there? <laughs> you jerks. Very good game. It's like one Love of the first multiplayer likes. games I played cool. a lot of. <laughs> um, so yeah, lot. it's good stuff. It's all good stuff, right? They're bringing value, value, value. And that's something we have been stressing since the start of this podcast. And it's something that Microsoft will stress all generation long, right? They want to be pro-consumer, they want you as a gamer to feel valued, not only with your time, but with your money as well. And I think they're bringing the products that you want to see. We got to get out of here. So Gary and Alana, I'm going to give each and every one of you both probably about a sentence to, you know, five sentences at the max. What do you think about what we saw this week from the picked back up from the leak, the price, the pre-orders, the dates, the two new consoles, the partnerships, the all access Everything combined, what do you think that you've gotten from this week? Alana, I'll let you cap off the episode right now with your insight. Great value. I think the Xbox social media team is doing a fantastic job right now um, of making things funny and relatable and like acknowledging leaks and owning it rather than, you know, acting like the mega corporation they ultimately are. But I really appreciate that. Um, but I'm also just going to take this time to hijack everything and say I've been playing more of Battletoads. And it rules like the level variety in battletoads like as i keep playing i keep being like this is yes. like there's so many yes alana yes more modes than i expected <laughs> it's um, a fun time alana tell no, the people I really i it's feel cool. like it's underrated now that i'm playing more of it i'm on the last stage now so i probably have maybe like an hour left um i've just been playing it slowly but like i feel like it's underrated at this point i'm like this game is super fun um also see, see if thieves got a dog update and it's the best thing ever played that so yesterday cool. also so good cool. stuff <laughs> Gary Witter, cap me off. What you got to say to the people? I'm just, I, I, okay, so I th again, I think the series, the, the big story this week is not the price and the release date of the Series X because again, we were, we, no one's surprised. November 10th, yeah, we knew it was going to be in that area. Four ninety nine, yeah, that's 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 within like the $50, you know, right, margin of area that we thought it would, no, no one's shocked. It, it just kind of like, it's more of a confirmation than it is a reveal. People go, yeah, people go, I went, yeah, okay, that sounds about right. That's kind of what we figured. The Series S is the one where people have kind of like gone, oh, uh, wow, okay, that's not what we, we didn't expect it to be that cheap. And um, we didn't expect it to have this kind of performance. I would argue that the Series S at this point has emerged as the more compelling of the two offerings across, you know, in terms of the big picture. I think the Xbox, the, 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 the X now almost feels like the pro model, like the high, like for people that really want the high performance. But the S, I think there's a good chance that that's actually the biggest seller 
this holiday and beyond. I would say that the price performance axis of the S is more interesting than the X. Like we again, there's nothing terribly mm -hmm. surprising about the about the Series X in terms of the price and performance, just as there isn't in terms of the PS5. Like we we expected it to be roughly that price and roughly that performance. But the but the, for the kind of again the hard drive um, storage space aside, which I feel like is the only kind of you know a pain point, um, and, they, and and there's a, and there's a way to fix that down the road. We if you, if you you know modify it, spend a little bit of extra money six months or a year from now. Two ninety nine for that performance is it is there's a lot of wow factor there, and I think that that is a big deal. And just generally, at this point, when November what six weeks away, these pre basically we're two months away now from the launch of these two systems. I'm just impatient. Like I look at my One X and my PlayStation Four Pro with derision. I'm like, look at those pieces of shit. We're going to get them out of here <laughs> and replace them with the true next gen hardware. <laughs> It's so close. We can taste it. We want that net. We want to have that next gen experience. It's only it's only a few weeks away. I'm just impatient to to make the leap into the into the next gen. Great stuff, both of you. Thank you so much. For me, as an Xbox gamer, looking back on the past seven years and looking back or looking forward to the future, Xbox and Microsoft killed it this week. I had a ton of fun, and I know that the internet and everybody around the globe that's a gamer put on a smile and had some fun. Right? We got to celebrate Xbox. And they recovered well. Like Alana said, their social media team should get a pat on the back and have a little celebration via a Zoom call. Because whoever thought of that to put out the meme and then the team to say, you know what, let's come out at midnight and let's bring this together was incredible. And we had so much fun throughout this week getting the price, the date, the pre-orders, the specs, all of these two new consoles, new announcements, more fun to be had. And in all honesty, I kind of feel bad. Microsoft because yes, they wanted to do it next week and it would have been a big celebration. We look back on this summer and Microsoft had some good conferences. None of them were great. None of them were perfect. None of them were celebrated around the masses. And I think this one with what we just saw from this week and how much fun everybody had on the internet, this would have been a killer presentation. This would have been a really fun event that Microsoft would have been really pumped up about. So I feel bad for them, but man, oh man, we still have so much to talk about that we didn't get to talk about in this week's episode. And of course, we'll talk about it next week, like big releases for launch day. We got Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision now. We have Apple and xCloud updates. We have Project xCloud going live on September 15th. Tokyo Game Show right around the corner and so much more Xbox news. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the Kind of Funny XCast. This has been episode nine for Gary, Alana, Barrett, and myself. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Thank you for supporting. And thank you for allowing us to power our dreams. Have a great weekend. Enjoy. And we'll see you next week.